So we're going to talk about dimensions, and the idea of dimensions is it's something that's really helpful in checking whether your equation has an inconsistency, but it's also a really helpful way to get started when you think about um, building a physical theory for something that you don't know a whole lot about. And really, dimensional analysis is the topic where we use the thinking hard about the dimensions of something um, to figure out whether it's possible that it's a physically consistent theory. And not all theories are dimensionally consistent, and that usually means that there's something you haven't quite put together right, and there's probably a parameter that um, needs more specification if that's the case. So what are dimensions? Dimensions are things like length or time or mass or temperature um, that um, describe the kind of measurement, the kind of quantity that something is. Um, and one of the things that you think about with dimensions is that they, two objects should be dimensionally consistent. So if I have an equation with something over here equals something over here, the dimensions on both sides need to be consistent. So if this side is a length, this side is also a length. Okay, great. Um, if you're adding things together, they should have the same dimensions. So you could do length plus length plus length, but you couldn't do length plus time because the dimensions are not consistent for those. If you multiply two things together with different dimensions, then the product actually gains the product of both. So if this was length times time or length divided by time, this would be length times time or length divided by time as well. Dimensions are closely related to something else called units, and the units are the units of measure for each dimension. So if I had something I wanted to describe a physical theory about, say this screwdriver, I might be interested in its mass, I might be interested in its width, but let's just use length as an easy example to give us a sense of units. So if I take out my measuring tape and measure this, it's about, this side is measured in centimeters, it's about 20 centimeters long, or this side is measured in inches, it's about eight inches long, or if I stretch down, I actually can see feet, so eight out of 12 is two divided by three, so two thirds of a foot. Those are all different units to describe the same dimension length of this same object. Obviously the units don't matter for how big this screwdriver is. And in fact, we could also say this screwdriver equals one unit of length. I'm gonna measure things based on this screwdriver, repeating it over and over again. That might seem a little silly, but what if the thing we're trying to describe is actually part of the physical problem we're thinking about, like one river's width wide or one Atlantic Ocean deep? Then that unit, going from zero at the surface to one at the bottom, or vice versa, something like that, might be a really compelling thing to measure everything by. So if you were on the beach, you might say that you were 50% of the way down to the total depth of some, somewhere else. So using that concept of dimensions, the things like length, time, and whether they can be equal to one another, and then choosing units that are convenient for the problem, which might be metric or SI units, or it could be anything you think is really convenient, like depth based on the depth of the ocean where you're looking, um, all of those are possible outcomes. But the key is, is that you can't mix the units in a way that doesn't make sense or mix the dimensions in a way that doesn't make sense. And so based on our screwdriver units with some approximation, we could say that one screwdriver is equal to eight inches, which is also equal to 20 centimeters. These aren't exactly equal, but they're pretty close which is also equal to 0 0.2 meters, which is also equal to two-thirds of a foot. Um, this is one way of thinking about how things with different units can be related to one another. But notice that the dimensions are consistent. Length, 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 length. That's what we already said we had to do to get inequality. There's one really special thing that you can do here which makes it really easy to manipulate your units, which is you can take the ratio of, a, of an equation like this and say one equals 20 centimeters over 0 0.2 meters, for example. 
where I've just taken these two on this part of the equation and divided one by the other to get one equals this. And the reason why, and we know that that's going to equal 100 centimeters over one meter, if we were to change and reduce the fraction to move the 0.2 downstairs out, uh, multiplying top and bottom by five, this is how we convert between things that have different units. So if I said I have one screwdriver, which is 20 centimeters, um, I might want to swap 20 centimeters for an equivalent amount in meters. And so I would multiply that times one, but a fancy kind of one, 20 centimeters times one meter divided by 100 centimeters. That's just the reciprocal of this version of one. And now I can cancel the centimeter units, top and bottom, and I end up with 20 divided by 100, or 0 0.2 meters. So this little fancy kind of one calculation is the way that we switch around from one set of units to another set of units, but we always have to be careful to be dimensionally consistent. And notice that the one doesn't have any dimensions at all. That's because this side has dimensions of length divided by dimensions of length. If I was converting time units, I could have said one equals dimensions of time divided by dimensions of time. Like one equals 86,400 seconds per day, or 24 hours per day, or 3,600 seconds per hour, etc. All of those would have been fancy kinds of one that we could have used. And now an important concept here is that it's a little bit philosophical is our numerical answers can depend on the units they are expressed in, but should not depend on the dimensionless quantities that they are expressed in. So let's take one really simple example. What if I say the swimming pool we have in mind is a particular length L. L could be, let's say, 100 meters. The amount, the speed of sound in water is about 1,500 meters per second. And suppose in this swimming pool we've got a tuna, and the tuna can swim about 20 meters per second. I won't tell you how I know these things, but I just know them. Now we can imagine if we release a sound, and the sound can bounce, reflect back and forth while the tuna is swimming from one end of the pool to the other, we could take the number of times that the sound bounces back and forth compared to how long it takes for the tuna to get from one end to the other to make a measurement of the tuna speed compared to the speed of sound. If we take the ratio of these two things, that's 75. So. The tuna swimming the pool one length one time, the speed of sound could ping back and forth 75 times at the same time. So a sound released at the same time the tuna started, you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth 75 times by the time the tuna gets over here. Now notice that 75 has no dimensions, whereas 1500 meters per second has dimensions of length per time, or the same as the dimensions of velocity, 20 meters per second has the length per time, the same dimensions as a velocity. The ratio of these two different velocities, speed of a tuna, speed of sound, is dimensionless. So dimensionless things are something that we can build theories out of because it doesn't matter what units you measure them in. If I had measured these in feet per second, I would have gotten exactly the same ratio of 75. If I had measured these in swimming pool lengths of 100 meters per second or 100 meters per fortnight or anything like that, I still would have kept those units cancel out and the dimensions cancel out to get a dimensionless ratio of 75 being the ratio of one speed to another speed. Now why is that important? Well, physical theories might relate two things together like the speed of a fish versus the speed of sound, but 
which is actually called the Mach number of the speed of the fish, which is kind of cool, whatever. The Mach number is a dimensionless ratio of a velocity compared to a particular, the speed of sound. So the Mach number of swimming tuna is about one over 75. And that tells us um, whether we have to consider things like supersonic hydrodynamics around the outside of the tuna. You don't have to consider it because one out of 75 is a pretty small number. But the point is the Mach number doesn't depend on what system of measurement we use. So the Mach number is something that stands aside from whether we're using yardsticks as big as the pool, a yardstick that's a yardstick, meters, seconds, years, whatever. That's the idea of a dimensionless number. It goes beyond the particular units and even the dimensions of the properties that you're measuring because it is a dimensionless thing. So when we go to study physical theories, we're going to pay a lot of attention to dimensionless ratios that arise naturally. The next short video is going to talk about how we extract dimensionless ratios from a set of equations.